1.5 is about designing experiments. So we talked a little bit about observations, we talked a lot about the basic terms of a study that you have to do. Now we're going to be looking at experiments. Experiments are where we're going to start controlling some of the outside factors so we can zone in on the one topic, the one characteristic that we want to study. Okay? What we're trying to stay away from is anecdotal evidence. Okay? This is just basic knowledge. It's things like if I'm trying to test out a new training program, well, if I pick out a student who is athletic, pick out one other student who's not athletic, and I test them on this training program, there's a good chance the athletic student's going to get better marks, improve their athletic ability, just because they are just more athletic. It's not naturally happened that way, rather than saying that the training program is what's doing it. Just having a one-to-one -one comparison like that isn't going to give us anything useful. What we're going to do now is kind of look at some of the things you can do to control some outside factors. We weren't controlling how athletic, the, or we weren't studying how athletic those two students were to begin with. We wanted to focus on just the training program. Okay? So for an experiment, a study in which the researcher actively imposes a treatment. Okay? We are actively going to put something onto our observational units. Now it's not always just a physical treatment. I mean, it could just be putting them in a different environment or a way I'm asking a question. Okay? But it's not many things I'm on it. doing these treatments is going to be controlled as much as possible so we know just that explanatory factor, the explanatory variable we want to study is what is going to cause the response as best as we can. Okay. Observational units should be identical in all respects so we can observe the explanatory variable's direct effect on the response variable. We don't want, like I just said the example I had, one very athletic student, one not so athletic student. That's not really a fair comparison just from the beginning. This is where a lot of the randomness that we talked about earlier is going to come into play. We want all types of students, all types of observation units in all of our treatment groups. And we don't just want one and one. We want to take a sample. Okay? We want to have a group of students so we can compare over and over again. Randomness is going to be important. Okay? This is going to control bias as we're picking out who's having what treatment. Okay? So each observation unit has to have an equal chance of being placed into one of the treatment groups. So if you have random assignment here, okay, then it's going to be a randomized comparative experiment. We're going to have different groups, and at the end of our treatment, we're going to then compare those groups to each other. How did the response for the one group compare to the response of the other group compare to the response of the other group? Okay? So again, random assignment is very important. Okay, you don't want, let's go back to a strength training program. You don't want all the athletic students in one group, all the non-athletic students in the other group. You want them mixed in between. Okay? If you have them mixed in between, it's not going to get rid of the bias. You're still going to have athletic students and non-athletic students, but now it's equally split up between the two groups. Okay? It's equally being matched out between the treatment groups, so it's a fair comparison now, and we can see it's not this group being more athletic. It is the training program that is causing the response. Okay? Randomness equals equal groups. Okay? If we have the randomness picking them into random assignments, we are going to have equal groups. It's going to be spread out between all the groups that we're looking at. Okay? Some things that you should think about when you're putting together the experiment. A control group, placebo, and the placebo effect for the control group. The probably the most important term up there is comparative. Okay, the reason we have a control group is so we can compare it with the group that is getting the treatment. Okay? The control group is kind of like the status quo. This group should not be getting the treatment. It should be kind of just the even level, the baseline, so we can compare it then. The reason we have that control group is we can see, okay, this is the group that is in their natural state, and this is what the response was. So then when we look at this group who took some form of supplement, took some form of medication, we can say, okay, the group that now had the treatment, their response went up, their response went down compared to that status quo group. So the control group is very, very important for comparing the groups at the end. Okay? Sometimes you can't have it, a uh, control group, but would it make sense to have it? And it's all about the study that you're doing. What are you looking at? So you're going to have to think, what's my situation look like? And am I able to have a control group for my situation?
okay? A placebo. Placebo is considered a false treatment, okay? So it would be something like a sugar pill. Now, before I said every observation unit should be identical, we're not getting a little more detail about being able to replicate and the, the process that you're going through, okay? The false treatment here, the placebo, that's so everyone is getting a treatment. Every observation unit is being treated the same and all their treatments are identical for each other, for each one. So everyone is at the end, they had all the same things, so now let's look at the response. If every observation unit is treated the same, we know those responses are going to be very uh, equal to what happened to that observational unit. Did that explain, did the explanatory actually have an effect on the response? Now, the reason we have the placebo is to control that placebo effect, okay? And the placebo effects can have on someone when people getting uh, when people getting the placebo feel better just because they're receiving a treatment. This is where kind of your mind is very powerful thing. It's going to have control over how you feel, how you act. Okay, so taking that placebo is giving you the sense that okay, I am taking some kind of medicine, so I'm equal to the other group taking the medicine. You might I mean, you don't know what's the placebo. You just feel you're taking it. So you might be feeling better just because you think you're taking medicine, but it's actually to control what could happen opposite. If you're the group not getting the treatment, not getting the medicine, okay, you might think in your mind, okay, why should I start feeling any better? Why am I, why should I start improving my health if I'm not taking anything? Well, that's not be the opposite. That's what the placebo is actually trying to stop. Everyone needs to be on that even playing field and all observation units kind of need to be treated the same. Okay, then we also have blind and double blind. Now, this is to control some of the outside effects. Okay? The observational units do not know which treatment they're receiving. So that's kind of with the placebo. Okay? The placebo is going to be used for the blinding. Okay, if everyone's going to get a pill, that's why I had up their sugar pill. So you don't know, am I taking a real medication or am I taking just the fake medication, but I'm doing it all the same. Every observation, no matter which group they're in, come up at say, whatever time, 10 a.m., and that's when you take your medication. Everyone has to be equal. So that would be a blind experiment. A double blind experiment, this is when the observational unit, units and the researchers are unaware of whose treatment. Now the reason you would do this, this is to control the outside factors of the person doing the evaluating, okay? Judgment is not influenced, okay? No matter if it's on purpose or not, okay? Consciously or subconsciously by any hidden bias. And this is something like say, if they are looking at a pain medication, okay? They might be seeing, okay, how does our subject move after taking this medication? Well, you don't want to be the doctor saying, okay, I know this person took pain medicine, this person didn't. Because then you're knowing, okay, this person should start moving a little easier, they shouldn't have as many uh, kinks in their back, and this person should. You don't want that evaluator to have that idea in their head, since it's their opinion. When they're looking at someone, I mean, it's not really a cut and dry, how did this person bend over, okay? Was it with their legs, was it with their back? That's not really cut and dry. The evaluator has a lot of influence on what the recording is going to be. Now, if the recording is something very straightforward, like a weight loss supplement, okay? Well, every observation unit is just stepping onto a scale. They're looking at the weight, and it is what it is. They write down the weight. If I have no influence, there's no real reason for it to be a double-blind experiment. All I'm doing is jotting down the weight of the person. If you don't have an influence, double blind's not really needed and might just take more time than needed to actually run that experiment. So you probably wouldn't have a double blind. So again, it's gonna depend on what study you're doing. So you need to think of your situation. Think, is the evaluator, could they have an influence on it or are they just using a tool and recording that number and that's it, very black and white. That's on be up to you, it's on depend on what kind of study you have. Okay? So these are a couple things to think about when you're putting together a experiment, okay? Make sure the control group is used for comparison and remember just some basic terms, placebo, blind, and double blind, okay? Randomness is needed. That's the key to experiment that you have the random assignment so the groups are as equal as possible 
And with that, now you can have some cause and effect conclusions. Because now you controlled outside factors and you know that response is what caused that, the, sorry, that explanatory is what caused the response to increase, decrease, or whatever you were looking at. Okay, so that is section 1.5.